Shalom, Maura, you live. Shalom, 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 everyone. We'd like to welcome you uh, to our live talk discussion. I have here uh, none other than the uh, legendary uh, pastor of all pastors, uh, the leader and founder of um, Sons of Yah, Chasing Our History, uh, none other than Pastor Keith Wilkins in the building. Uh, Shalom, Pastor, how you doing? We good, how about yourself? Doing good, sir, doing good. Uh, on tonight, um, we're gonna wanna have a, a, a brief uh, conversation uh, with you on tonight. Um, I know a lot of uh, emails been coming in um, asking uh, questions about this particular topic. And um, uh, we want you to address uh, this particular topic on tonight um, um, to share with our audience uh, uh, abroad, um, whether on Facebook or YouTube or all the social media platforms. Let me just say this. Um, uh, how are you doing on tonight? We good. How about yourself, Maury Douglas? Everything is good. Everything is good. Everything is good. Awesome. Um, we've awesome. been we've been watching and, and monitoring uh, your your journey uh, to uh, the Devil's Punch Bowl, which we're not really going to talk about on tonight, but. Uh, just sitting back and watching you do um, um, something that really has never been done uh, before to the extent that, that you are doing it uh, for our people. Um, I am uh, one of, I want to be one of the first to say, you know, um, I, I salute you on a dangerous job um, and how you're putting your life on the line because it is a dangerous job, a life situation. Uh, not only that you you have to deal with the nature uh, uh, of, of what's down there, but you have to, you actually have to deal in dangerous territories uh, for the black man. So I want to I want to salute you uh, on that, and 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 to all those uh, ones that are, are attached or connected to uh, the sons of Yah uh, chasing our history. Um, I like to uh, also say to to your beautiful Isha. Uh, on tonight, you know, we salute her as well because we believe and know that beside every uh, strong man, there is a strong woman, and and we want to salute her, uh, um, Lady Wilkins, on tonight. So, without any further ado, um, without my babbling going on, um, um, Thank you, the topic, the topic tonight, I want to discuss, or I want to, I want you to basically uh, address. Uh, is uh, the topic in which um, people have been asking questions um, to the emails about, which is revealing uh, uh, the dragon and the beast. Um, we want to basically uh, uh, want you to address that on tonight. Uh, um, you let me know when you're ready to roll with the question. Take your time. I'm ready when you are. Can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, I'm ready when you are. Can you hear me, Maury? You freezing up on me. You freezing up on me. Um, let me do this. Are, are you with me? I am here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You was freezing up on me. Let me do this while I'm waiting on you to come back in. Um, the first thing we're going to... Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I don't know what's basically going on. My internet is tripping really bad. Facebook, um, we know. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I want to, uh, uh, again, I want to, I want you to address, uh, cause you've been getting numerous questions about a lot of things. And one of the topics, um, that, that, uh, um, the, the community has been, uh, wanting you to address is revealing the dragon and the beast. And my question to you tonight is who exactly is the dragon? 
the dragon, um, he, he came to existence in 252 BCE uh -huh. through the Roman Republic. He, uh, he maintained his status through three different eras, the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire, and the fall of Rome. He's maintained his status. He's been able to hide himself through all three of those eras. You had the Roman Republic, which was um, about 700 years. Then you had the Roman Empire that comes in for 475 years. And then we know Constantinople is about until 1452. We know that West Rome, Constantinople is East Rome. We know West Rome is uh, 475 AD. Constantinople exists until 452, 453 uh, AD. And we know that the Roman Republic lasted for about Seems 700 right. years from the BC era to the first century of AD. Uh -huh. um, the, the dragon, if you study history, you'll find the dragon to be the Pontifus Maximus, the Pope. They have immense power, and that power is spiritual and moral. It's not legislation. Uh, the Senate passes the law as far as legislation that governs Rome. But the thing is, a Pontifus Maximus does not need Senate approval to pass spiritual or moral law, which gives that Pontifus Maximus supreme power. That's why you hear the Supreme Pontiff, you'll hear the Pontifus Maximus, you'll hear the Great Pontifus, or you'll even hear the name Pope. All of those are the same people from the same monarchy. Kind. What we understand is that monarchy is about 24 to 2,500 years old. This is the dragon. When you understand what the dragon represents, then you have to turn to the ultimate power. And that would be the Pontifus Maximus, which would be the highest bishop in the Roman Catholic Church under the Roman Empire or the Roman Republic for 200, I think for 250 years, that Pontifus ruled as the Roman Republic. But once Caesar came along and he rerouted the Roman Republic to the empire, we know Caesar was not an emperor, but his great nephew is the first emperor of Rome. But Caesar willed that power to Octavius. We also understand how great was that Pontifus Maximus power. The first five emperors of the Claudian, Julio Claudian dynasty were popes. These were literal popes. This is what history tells us that we don't talk about concerning the Roman Catholic Church. Now, understand this when I make that statement. Peter was never a pope because Peter is dead before Nero dies. And Nero is the last Pontifus Maximus that we know of, of the Claudia, Julio Claudian dynasty, because we know the Flavian dynasty takes over in 69 AD, 68 AD. We know Nero's dead around 67, 68 AD. So that Pontifus Maximus with that supreme power is a monarchy. Mm -hmm. That monarchy has changed through eras, but we see that power as late as the papal bulls. We see that it means power. Now, when we study the history of Judah and our Hebraic faith, if you look at history, we start seeing conflict with the Pope being in line with our people. One of the biggest problems we face is Paul's death. I wanna show you the immense power of this Pontifus Maximus, especially as an emperor. The emperor is limited as the emperor when it came to Paul because of Roman law. And the Senate would never endorse what he was about to do. And there's a reason for that. 
So he had to go through religious moral law. When you deal with the dragon, you're dealing with religious moral law. We hear Daniel in Daniel 2 explain how the iron and the clay is mixed together. That uh -huh. iron is government. That clay is religion. We know Constantine in 321 AD, he puts religion and government together. We know this. Here's where the struggle comes from. What are the 10 toes? Because we understand that we have the Pontifus Maximus. So what do we have between him and that first beast? Some people say it's the 10 toes, is it? So when we're dealing with it, let me say it like this so I can get a, give a clear understanding. When you're dealing with the beast system and that image that Daniel talked about, that image represents what? Hellenization. We understand that the beast system represents colonization. I will prove that through the scriptures tonight. Now, there are many that, that battle between what are those 10 toes. Some say they're the European nations. I question that because of the scripture in Revelation uh, 17, so I question that. So research tells me that Rome had 10 different divisions under him, under them, 10 different regions that are influenced by what? Constantine, government, and religion, which is also mentioned in those 10 toes. Uh -huh. So if you study the Roman Empire, you understand these 10 regions that made up Rome. And is that the 10 toes? We can go into a deeper debate on that in another day. But I wanted to put that out there. Now, what we have to understand before we even deal with the Pontifus Maximus and the beast and the whore that sit up on the water, I bring history to the table. So I only bring a part. I will not bring the whole fulfillment tonight. Anybody that's looking for that, I apologize. You will be disappointed. But I will bring history to this prophecy. What we have to understand is it took seven angels to seal it. So it's going to take multiple prophets to reveal it. Now, when we deal with the Pontifus Maximus, we deal with 252 BCE, the high priest of Rome, the highest priest in Rome, who has the authority to write spiritual and moral law. They also can put you to death. We'll prove that as well here in a second. Now, when we start dealing with that dragon, we understand that that dragon is the Pontifus Maximus because he does some ominous things towards the beast. We know the dragon gives the beast power. Now, this dragon, which was represented by Satan, that represents Satan, and we keep hearing the synagogue of Satan, this dragon is the representation on the earth of Satan. Now, what do we understand about this dragon being that representation? We know the revelation tells us that the dragon would be cast down in the last day for Satan deceiveth the whole world. And then what does he mention? That dragon. What is he talking about when he says that dragon? Okay, he's dealing with religion. How do you deceive the whole world? Now you have to go into history and this will point you to the Pontifus Maximus. If you go through Catholicism, you'll find out that Muslims is a part of Catholicism. Judaism is a, is a part of Catholicism. And you also know Christianity is a part of Catholicism. When you, when you put the numbers together, then you find more than 5.8 billion are influenced through the Catholics, through these doctrines. We understand by 20, 2010, 7.9 billion people are on the earth. So you hear the majority being influenced by what? the Pontifus Maximus, which is the Catholic Church, the monarchy of the Catholic Church, because they control Judaism, they control uh, Catholicism and Christianity. See what I'm saying? And also they control, excuse me there, they control the Muslim faith as well. So we know Muslims make up almost 2 billion by themselves. When you add up all the Christians, you start to look at another 2.34 billion. And Judaism, you start getting up to that number of about 5.8 billion that makes up 
the authority of this monarchy, which is the Pontifus Maximus. When we deal with that Pontifus Maximus, we also have to deal with his supreme power based on the ruling body, which is that monarchy. So if you would let me go to, go to the book of uh, Acts, I believe it is, Moray, I wanna show this immense power so we can understand it. Then I'll give you the timeline of that beast. If you go to the book of Acts, and let's deal with Paul telling the centurions that he's a Roman citizen, if you would, please. The first sign of the Pontifus Maximus that we need to understand is Judah is the Pope put Paul to death. That's wow. what we need to understand. That's the power he had. What's this? Acts 22 and 25, right? Starting there. Mm -hmm. All right. And it says, and they bound him with thorns. Shaul, or Apostle Paul, said to the, to the Saturnian who stood by, is it lawful for you to scorn a man who is a who is a Roman and uncondemned? Question. When the satirical condemn, right? Sir. So he didn't break no Roman laws. He's a Roman citizen, right? He's a Benjaminite by blood, but he's also a Roman citizen. And he's telling him, I broke no Roman laws, right? Uh, uh, What's this? 26 verse says. When the Saturgeon heard that, he went and told the commander saying, take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, tell me, are you a Roman? He said, yes. The commander answered with a, lar with a large sum of, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. The commander answered with a large sum of obtained uh, this citizenship. And Paul said, but I was born a citizen. Then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew. Wait a minute, why they withdraw? So they was about to examine him and they withdrew. And the commander was- Go ahead. Okay, and and the uh, wherever I was, oh, and the commander was uh, was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman, and be and because he had bound him, the next day because he wanted to know for certain. Wait a so you said the commander was concerned that he bound a Roman. Why would he be uh, fearful for binding a Roman? Because he's bound many Romans who would break in the Roman law. Yet in this case. We know through the scripture, he's not breaking Roman law. God. But yet, what do we know? The story plays out and Paul wants to get before who? He wants to get before Caesar himself, which would have been in the monarchy, Octavius, which means the great one. So he wanted to get before the great one of the Claudian dynasty. God. So how do you get him before the great one if he didn't break any Roman law? To break Roman laws, you would have to go before the Senate. So why is it that he's going before Caesar and not the Senate? Caesar don't have the power if he broke Roman law to put him to death. That has to go through the Senate. But Paul winds up in front of Caesar. Why does he wind up in front of Octavius? Because Octavius is also a Pontifus Maximus. So he's not dealing with Paul based on Roman law that he would have broken because the guards came to the conclusion that he broke no law. He was dealing with Paul on the spiritual and moral law that the Pontifus Maximus has the authority to write and take action up on, and he don't need the Senate to do it. So the only person, because Paul did not break any Roman law, that could put him to death in the Roman Empire would have been a Pontifus Maximus, AKA a Pope. So we know that, that, that Octavius is a Pope, Augustus is a Pope. He's a Pontifus Maximus and he's the one who puts Paul to death. Why was he putting Paul to death if Christianity aligns with what Paul was teaching? 
there would be no reason to put Paul to death. Huh. So you understand what I'm saying? Because Christianity goes all the way back into what? Antioch, Ephesian, and the Roman Greco world. So there's no reason to put Paul to death if the Catholics and the apostles agreed on the same doctrine, because this is a Pope that's putting Paul to death. So the first problem we have is a lie told by the Catholic Church. It's the second lie. The first lie is Peter was the first Pope. Not possible because the Pontifus Maximus was Nero. When Peter died, he was the Pope. That's the first lie. The second lie that the Catholic Church tells is who put Paul to death. Your religion, your doctrine does not agree with the apostles who you say started your doctrine, because if it did, you would have never put Paul to death under spiritual law that the authority of a Pope had from 252 BCE all the way until now today. So we have a historical record of this dragon and this dragon is not for Judah. I can show you Papa Bull after Papa Bull, 1452. Pope Nicholas is chasing Judah. Where did he find them? In West Africa. What did he tell the, the, the Portuguese and the Spaniards? To convert them to Christianity or to enslave them? Wait a minute, if we have the same doctrine, why are you converting them? Some say, well, those were Muslims. Some were Muslims, but the Portuguese testified that they also found those of circumcision practicing the Sabbath on Saturday, and they buried their, their people away from their culture, away from their civilization, which is a part of the Hebraic faith. Now, so we understand the Papa Bull 1452 is fighting who? Judah. The Papa Bull and the exposure from Spain, the Spanish Inquisition of 1493, another Papa Bull from Pope Alexandria. So why are you fighting those who are circumcised? Why are you fighting those who are keeping the Sabbath when you say that they are your people and these are descendants under the practice of the apostles doctrine? Because the Pope is masking himself when he's actually doing the work of Satan as the dragon. Because the Pope brought you four entities that produce, deceive the whole world. Catholicism, Judaism, Muslims, and Christianity. And that masses in the four corners of the earth, just like Judah. Why? Because that mass that the Catholics have produced has been chasing Judah from the time that Judah becomes a part of the Roman Empire. So we see that. What do we also know about this immense power? We know that in 1205 B AD, the Pope protected what? He protected England from tyranny, from, from battle and war. He was signing edicts to protect them. We know that Queen Elizabeth I rebelled against the Pope when she reigned. What was she? She was a Protestant. What was she doing, Pastor Wilkins? She was doing three things that you need to hear in history. One, she was destroying all Catholic, all the Catholic uh, uh, monasteries were being destroyed. She was also persecuting those who were Catholics. Why? She was a Protestant. What else was she doing, Pastor Wilkins? She signed into commission what? The British Empire to get involved in the Atlantic slave trade. What else was she doing? Persecuting those Jews that were from the fallout of the Spanish Inquisition. Many of them were burned at the stake by who? The first queen of the monarchy of Queen Elizabeth. That's why you hear in Revelation that that whore has the blood of the saints is talking about the monarchy of Queen Elizabeth, and it goes deeper. It's also talking about what? The monarchy of the British Empire itself, which would be England that produces what? The British Empire itself. We know that England is before the empire. 
but we will get into that. So when you deal with the dragon, we understand that there is a uh, edict, a papal bull of 1570 that was issued to who? The first queen of England, Elizabeth the first. Well, she's not the first queen. She's the first queen of the, uh, of the Elizabeth monarchy. And we know this is 1507 and it's done by Pope Pyrrhus and uh, the fifth, and he, what? He excommunicates the queen from the Catholic religion. He excommunicates her from all the religion that the Catholics practice. She's excommunicated. What did the queen do? She then forms an alliance with who? The Muslim. We have to understand there's two forms of Jews that was sitting in the Spanish Inquisition. You had the Muslims, and you also had those traditional Jews that were circumcised. So we know the Pope has been chasing Judah. So we understand that that dragon is going to make war against the uh, against what the children of the woman. We under the child of the woman. That dragon is the what the monarchy of the popes of the what Roman Catholic Church. That's the dragon. That's what you're dealing with. I will reveal him deeper in scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, what, what do you suppose why there are uh, so many views uh, of the beast? Let me show you something. I'm, gonna, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, let, me, let me show you when the beast, we know the time period of the beast. You have to go to Revelations 17. It gives you the literal timeline of the beast. You can't beat this. Revelation 17, and watch this, the 10th verse, it tells you the beast system. It tells you exactly what the beast system is under the first and second beast. Now, understand the reason why there's so much confusion about uh, um, revelations and the beast is because the Edomites trying to teach it. But who wrote Revelation? It was what? One of the Jews, right? So we understand John is a Jew. He writes Revelation. So the message is sent to the Jews. So the Jews' prophets must unlock Revelation. One prophet cannot unlock Revelation alone. It took seven angels to seal it. It's going to take multiple prophets to reveal it. My part is the history part putting the dates in place. Watch this. I put the Pontifus Maximus, the beast in place, 252 BCE. Now let's put the beast in place. Watch this. 10th verse of Revelations 17 and 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen. Who are those five? Who are those five that were over Judah? Egypt, Assyria, Persian, Babylonia, and the Greeks. Those five have fallen. When is he writing Revelation? Under the Roman Empire, Revelations is being written. What does he say about the Roman Empire? This is what he said. And one is, what is he saying? One is current. When? During the time of Revelation. That would be the Romans. And listen what he said that is ominous. Watch this. And not yet to come. And one in another, excuse me there, and the other is not yet to come. Why does that say, and the other is not yet to come? Because the colonial powers don't exist yet. The, the British Empire does not exist yet. Those first six uh, 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 kings that enslaved us, like uh, 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 you dealing with uh, Nebuchadnezzar, you dealing with Cyrus, those kings that enslaved us were empires. There's another empire that he's telling you, and he's speaking to the, to, to, to the time of current Rome, which is that sixth empire under Julius Caesar dynasty, monarchy. Yet the seventh one is yet to come. What are you talking about? Those seven kings, which would that be? That would be the monarchy of the British. Hear that. So we know that one is yet to come. The question is, is that monarchy of the royal British or is that monarchy the monarchy of England that established the British? We would have to say it's the monarchy of the English 
that established the British for the mere fact Queen Elizabeth I gets involved in the Atlantic slave trade, which we will deal with in a second. So we understand what does she do? She sends John Hawkins in 1562 into West Africa. She even gave him a medal when he came back and it had what? The naked slaves of West Africa as memorabilia hanging off that medal that he received. Now, what do we understand? She wanted nothing to do with it until she seen how profitable it was. So we understand that the Elizabeth monarchy represent what? The British monarchy. How great was the Elizabeth monarchy? We understand in 1957, they outlaw kings. Now queens are the only thing that they acknowledge in the British monarchy. They the ones who have the influence. And we understand those queens are of the Elizabeth dynasty of her monarchy. Hear this, she becomes a legend because she defeats who? The Spaniards, she, she defeats Spain at, in war, which was not supposed to be doable. So she becomes a legend, but she's also treacherous. She's treacherous as she can't stand the beast. Uh, she can't stand the dragon, which is the Pope. She's totally against the Catholic religion cause she adopts what? The Protestant faith and to tick them off, she forges alliance with the Muslims. Hear that. Now, so we understand why revelation gives us categories to separate these. He's separating the religion, but wait a minute, the monarchy of the of the of Queen Elizabeth also walks in strong religion. Yes, but it's against the Catholics. That's where you hear the whore, the term of the whore, because she's not connected to the Catholics. Hear that. So what are we understanding? We understand that time period would have to be from the Roman Empire that beast is going to rise somewhere between, that first beast will rise somewhere between the Roman Empire and the what? British Empire. Let's look at it. Does that beast rise like Pastor Wilkins said? So let's look at it and see. Revelation 13. Watch what happened. John, and I stood up on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. What sea? The Atlantic slave trade. What is a beast, a dominating power? This is where we get confused with all the tea leaves that we try to explain when a clue, a clue is staring us in the face. So what we want to explain is the lion, the leopard, and all that, and the bear. Leave that alone. Somebody else will unlock that. The part here is the timeline of the beast and what is the beast. So he says, now I stood up on the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. We know that it has to be between the Roman Empire because one is and another is yet to come. And who was prophesying? John in the time of the Roman Empire. So the one is, is the Roman Empire. So who is the one that is yet to come? That's the question. Now watch this. He said, I stood up of the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea. What sea? The Atlantic Ocean, the Ethiopian Ocean. And having seven heads and 10 horns up on this, or these horns, 10 crowns. Watch this. Up on the head was the name of blasphemous. We know the Catholic Church speaks blasphemy. Hear this. In order to colonize a people, you need religion and you need government might. What was that religion? Christianity. Who was endorsing it? The Catholics. Who set the Atlantic slave trade in motion? We know those, that the, uh, the Portuguese were doing slave raids in 1444, but it's the Papal Bull of, four, of 1452 that sets this bad boy in motion. Watch this, watch this. And the name of blasphemy was up on it. We know just by the fact that Paul was teaching the fulfillment of what? Of the, of the law and he was put to death for it, tells us the Catholics and our people are not the same people. That's lies and manipulation. They lied on Peter. Peter can't be the first Pope because Nero is the Pontifus Maximus. History tells us that. So what are you doing, Pastor? I'm putting the history to the revelation 
and watch the prophets take off if they hear understand what I'm saying. Now watch this, second verse. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet were like unto, was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon who? The Pontifus Maximus. So we know colonization deals with religion. Who? And the dragon gave his, this power, his seat, and great authority. So we know that the Pontifus Maximus is a part of the beast system. What power? What were they doing under those papal bulls? They were forcing them to become what? Christians. So we know they were outside of the Christian domain. But yet there were some that were Muslims that were still inside of that dragon's domain. Those Muslims turn around and do what? The bidding for the Catholics against what? Those traditional Jews, those Jews of Portuguese Spain, those Jews of West Africa that the Portuguese talk about they encountered on their slave raids. Now, watch this. Listen what he goes on to say. Somebody will speak some of this that I just said, that lion, that feet, all that, that's not mine. Let me keep with history. And I saw one of their heads as if it were wounded to death and the, this deadly wound was healed. Let's deal with that. Now I'm gonna deal with the seven heads and the 10 crowns because it's gonna shock you. So what is that seventh head that was wounded? The British. Wounded how? The Revolutionary War. Who are they fighting? Themselves. They were healed. When were they healed, Pastor Wilkins? Let's look at it. Let's look at what it says by the treaty. I got the treaty. The Paris Treaty. Watch this. The Paris Treaty of 1783 that was in Paris that brought America and the British Revolutionary War to a total end and they reunite. So we know that the Revolutionary War is talking about that seven head, which is that, wrote that British Empire. I'll tell you the other six heads here in a minute. And that seven head was wounded, but it was healed. So we know the Revolutionary War, the British were defeated. So they were, it was a fatal wound, but yet through the Paris Treaty, when the Americans and the British aligned together and the British agree that the 13 colonies and Louisiana and other parts of America now belong to the Americans that defeat them. We know Texas did not belong to them. We understand that. We have to deal with that in another time. We know technically Louisiana belonged to the French, but somehow through that treaty, the Americans get Louisiana too. Now watch this. They have authority, but they're not taking dominance over because the French are still dominating that area. And we know the Americans and the French went to war. Watch this now. Now we see that seventh head because we have to deal with that seventh head. That seventh head is the British, but there's the, the ominous sign that tells us history has to deal with this is the seven heads and the 10 crowns. What are those, Pastor Wilkins? Let's deal with. By the 1900s, there were seven nations by the 1900s, not in the 1900s. That means it started before then, but by the time the 1900s roll around, you had the British colonial power, the French colonial power, Germany colonial power, Belgium colonial power, Portuguese colonial power, Spain colonial power, Italy colonial power. Why is that important? Because the beast rose from the Atlantic slave trade. Understand, those seven heads represent the result of the Atlantic slave trade. What happened because of the Atlantic slave trade? Now Africa gets colonized by these European countries that make up those seven heads. Now, watch this. How did you get 10 crowns, Pastor Wilkin? History tells us that too. Now, the six nations that profited the most from the Atlantic slave trade. Watch this. You had the British, one, Spain, two, Portugal three, so we know the seven heads are the colonial powers, but now we're dealing with another entity within that colonial power 
And it's what? The British one, Spain two, Portugal three. Now, we know those three are also in what? The colonial powers, but they also leaders of the what? Atlantic slave trade. Here's where those three, here's where you get the 10 crowns because it's 10 nations that make up what? The beast and the colonial powers and three nations to those slave traders. These are the three nations. The French, one, the Dutch, two, the Danish, three. So that's where you get seven, seven crowns, which is seven nations, and you get seven heads, which is the beast itself, which are the colonial powers. You see 10, history tells us that. Now, understand also, in that history, the Danish and the Dutch are the Jews. How do you know that? because the Jews were flying under what? The Danish and the Dutch flag. That was a Dutch flag that was on the white lion that came here in 1619. So we see the 10 nations of kings and we see the seven heads of the beast, which are the colonial power. So we clearly see this is the Atlantic slave trade and they're not leaving anybody out of global influence. Now, the question is asked to me the other day, why you don't talk about the Arabic slave trade? It's not global influence. It's the Atlantic slave trade that built up the Western world and produced the greatest power in human civilization. Hear that. This beast has great power. And we know that that seven heads suffered a fatal wound, revolutionary war, and was healed, the Paris Treaty of 1783. So we know that. So when you deal with this first beast, you see the timelines between the Roman Empire and the rise of the colonial powers through who? The British, who were the mightiest of the colonial powers, that seventh head. Hear that. Wow. <laughs> that is a lot. So what does the second beast what is the second beast? Um, let me read this. Let me read this first. Because somebody's going to say, you can't prove that's the Atlantic slave trade. The 10th verse proves that. This is what he said. And he that leadeth cap into captivity shall go into captivity. We know the timeline is between the British and the Roman Empire. And he's talking about captivity. The only captivity, the timeline that is significant between the Romans and the British is the Atlantic slave trade. Nail it down. History says that. Now, what is the second beast is what you ask? Man, you asking a lot. I'll tell you that, brother. <laughs> See, where we get confused with the second beast is that 10th verse. The 10th verse is only giving you the, the timeline of the beast power. We know that the Hellenization was the golden, it was that image and those four kingdoms. We know Hellenization is the tail end of those four kingdoms, starting with the Greeks, and the Romans, that's Hellenization. We also understand between them would have to be what? The 10 toes. Everybody keeps saying those are uh, 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 European nations. No, these nations are established. If you say the European nation, then you say that the 10 toes are established after the beast. And we know these toes are established through the Romans, which would be before the beast. So what would that be? There were 10 regions of the Roman Empire that would influence the whole world through government and religion, those 10 toes. We have nothing that says that these toes were not connected to the beast. They were a part of the beast. We know one leg was what? You see, when you start dealing with that fourth kingdom, one leg was what? East Rome. The other leg was West Rome. That's where you get the part of the Roman. You had East Rome, one leg, Const Constantinople, which is under Constantine, who instituted what? Government and religion. He mixed the what? The clay and iron together. We know that the Romans were a iron kingdom. We understand that. So we know Constantine mix, mixed the Roman government with Christianity. We hear that. And who was there? Pope Sylvester II, the first, was at that meeting. Why? He's the Pontifus Maximus at that time, if you do your research. And we know that the other leg was West Rome. So the two legs of that image is East Rome, Constantinople, and West Rome. 
and the significance of East Rome is the mixing of the iron, the Roman kingdom with what? With the clay. And when that happened, what happened? Christianity goes global. From that time on, the Pontifus Maximus becomes mighty because he has a religion that he can infiltrate in the government. So you'll say, okay, how do you connect that to the British and Americans? We understand the rule of law. Septimius wrote the foundation and he was from 193 to like one, I believe it's 132 BC, uh, AD, the first century, he was a black emperor. His sons ruled after him and they destroyed the dynasty. He wrote the foundation of the rule of law that the sixth century emperor adopted and built up on. It's that sixth century emperor's rule of law that was from the foundation of Septimius, who wrote what? He wrote a lot of case law. But that same law was instituted in the sixth century. It died out after Septimius' death, and he resurrects it. So what happened? Then the British adopted in around 1205 AD. And what happened after that? America adopts it from the British. So you see the connection from the Romans to the British to the Americans. History tells us that. Now, that second beast is about religion as well. Why? The dragon is religion. Hear that. Let's deal with that second beast. Watch this. In the book of Revelation 17, can I do something? I said, let's deal with the whore first. Because technically the whore that sit up on the water comes before that second beast. I'll show you that. 13th, uh, chapter 17, first verse. And there came out of one seven angels, which had the what? Seven, seven bells and talk with me, saying, say, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto you the judgment yeah. of the great whore that sitteth upon the water. Who is that great whore? We're going to get into that. I'll tell you up front what I can tell you what it is. It's the British Empire through what? The, the, through the monarchy of who? Of Queen Elizabeth. Hear that. That is that great whore. Watch what he says. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made, have been, have made to drunk, have made, have been, excuse me, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away and the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw the woman upon a scarlet colored beast. This is royalty. If you look at the British Empire, they have a huge beast that they represent as their flag. Watch this. And I seen, and he, John's telling you what, what he sees. And I saw a ray in purple scarlet colors and decked out with gold and precious stones and pearls and having gold, a golden cup in her hand full of the abomination and filthiness of fornication. Where'd they get that gold? From Africa. Where'd they get that gold, Pastor Wilkins? From Africa. What was happening at this time? The colonial powers are forming. What was happening? The colonial powers are forming. What did the Portuguese, who is one of the seven heads of that beast, what were they doing? They were forming colonial powers at that time. Hear that. Because they was what? Colonizing through who? The Jesuit priests. They use who? The Jesuit priests as religion, and they use government and their might as what? As the power that would begin to colonize Africa. Hear that. Now, watch this. Watch what happens. And it says, and blasphemy. blasphemy. Now, watch this. And in the wilderness, I saw a woman set up on a scarlet colored beast, the British Empire, because we understand is the beast. If you look at that beast, you look at their, their flag, that beast has multiple colors full of names of blasphemy. We understand what the British done to the world through the Roman Empire and the heads of 10 horns. And excuse me, having seven heads and 10 horns. We hear that. So we know that the first beast is still involved. Watch this. 
And the woman was arrayed, and it talks about all her beauty and fornication. But watch this. And up on her forehead, the fifth verse, a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, mother of harlots. Who is that? That's the what? What did they call England? The mother. She was known as the mother nation. She is the mother nation that birthed what? The British, the British what? Empire comes after her. Watch this. The British are all tied in this. Watch this. And what? The mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth. So who is she the mother of? She's the mother of the British Union, the UK Union. She's the mother of the United States of America. And we know America practiced the same thing that the Romans practiced, all the free religion you want. If you atheist and you say that the devil is Yah, then you have the freedom to say that. And if you was to attack that, that is protected by hate speech. Right here in America, the adultery, the fornication, the marriage of men with men, women becoming bishops, being gay, gay bishops leading the house of the Catholics, not the house of Yah, but the house of the Catholics. All this abomination, abortions, and all this other stuff under this ruling power of the colonial powers. Hear that. Watch this. Now, watch what he said. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Hmm. We know that England was persecuting in the 10th and 11th century. What? They were persecuting Jews. Where were those Jews from, Pastor Wilkins? They were from what? The, 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 the disperse of 70 AD. Taking the Messiah told you, and you will be taken into all the nations. So we know the Romans controlled a lot of that area and they were scattered into that area. So you're talking about Judah again. Watch this, watch this. The blood of the saints, because we were being killed, we were being martyred. Everybody thought that was Paul. Now he's talking about the saints from 70 AD until now being killed and martyred. Watch this. The blood of the saints and martyrs of who? Hamashiach. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, wherefore doest thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. He said, don't marvel at this because it ain't what you think. It looks beautiful. And we know the Western world looks beautiful, but it ain't what you think. Watch this, watch this. And the beast that carrieth her, which haveth the seven heads and what? So we know that the power of the what? British Empire came through who? The beast. So we know he's dealing with what here? The beast, that first beast again. Watch this, watch this. Now, it goes on and talk about that second beast and it deals with that second beast in the 12th verse. And the 10 horns which thou showest are the 10 kingdoms, are the 10 kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour within the beast. What is that? If you look at the Rothschild dynasty, there have been 10 heirs, nine heirs, including the father to the throne of the Rothschilds. How do you know that's the Rothschilds, Pastor Wilkins? He's about to tell you this. These have one mind, and still give their power and strength unto the beast, the Rothschilds. Who, who's holding up Jerusalem right now? That Jerusalem that these false Jews are in, the Rothschilds. Who's got the whole world defending them? The Rothschilds is the next verse that tells you it's the Rothschilds. Watch this. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall re overcome them. Who makes war? Who funded all the wars from World War I, World War II? Who funded these wars? The Rothschilds. How did they get, uh, 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 um, how did they get the, how did those false Jews get that place that they in now? Through a Belfort agreement through the Rothschilds. How did they get there? The first World War I, it did what? 
it gave them a declaration from the British that they could move into the land. Woodrow Wilson, he ran as a non-war candidate, but because he's blackmailed because of his infidelity and they blackmail him, America's drawn into the war and who benefits from World War I? Those Ashkenazi Jews. Now they're drawn into World War II. Who, be, who benefits from that? Those Ashkenazi Jews. How do they benefit from World War I? The Belfort Declaration. How do they benefit from World War II? They become a Jewish state in what? That lane. So we see they funding these wars and they're benefiting from these wars. It says 10 kings that have no crowns. They have all the power of kings. Why? Because through the banking system, they control these kingdoms. So they have the same amount of power as these kingdoms. What does America do? They subject to the Rothschilds. Why? Because America is a corporation. Who is the funder of the corporation? Who runs all the news outlets? They do. Who runs most of America? They do. Who controls their currency? They do. Who tells them to send the money to Jerusalem? They do. So they operate like kings, yet they have no crowns. The Rothschilds. Watch this. Watch this. Now, when we deal with that second beast, we know it deals with what? Two horns, right? So what are those two horns, Pastor? Because I don't want to be long. I'll just paraphrase it. You can go look this up. The two horns are also influenced by who? The beast, the dragon, excuse me there. They're also influenced by who? The dragon. So we know we, that we know the dragon is religion. So what is that influence of the dragon? So who would those two horns be? That would be who? The Muslims and Judaism. And it says that they rain fire. They have the ability to do what? Rain fire from where? From the heavens. What is that representing? What are you talking about? Matter of fact, I'm going to read it. Let's look at that second beast. Let's go back to 13. Let's look at that second beast. I want to read it. I don't want to leave it out there like that. Let me read it. Revelations 13. Let's look at the 11th verse. And behold, another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So we know his influence, his religion is based on the dragon. What is the religions of the dragon? Muslim, Judaism, Catholicism, and Christianity. So who are those two horns? The Muslims and Judaism. How do you know that, Pastor? Watch what the 12th verse says. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. So they have the support of the colonial powers. Hear that. They have the support of the slave traders. Hear that. Watch this. Therefore, of the first beast, therefore him and causes the earth, them which dwelleth therein, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, still dealing with the British, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh, what, fire come down from where? From, he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth. What is that? You see it right now. You see the scuttle missiles coming out of the sky in the Gaza Strip. These two horns are firing nuclear arms into both each other's land. And this is a religious war, the Judaism versus what? Muslims. So we see the history playing out all throughout the scripts. We know the second beast the timeline of the second beast would have to be somewhere in the ninth, the 20th century when the Muslims and the Jews go to war. And those are those two horns. And it says they speak of the influence of that what? Of that dragon. They speak in what? Judaism on one side and they speak in the Muslim faith on the other side. And they cause in fire to rain down from the heavens, and they have the backing of the first beast and the same power. Why? The colonial powers have backed them up from their existence. The Jews have been backed by, by the colonial powers since their existence. They're now being backed by the Americans to stay in their existence. Hear that. So what are you saying, Pastor? I showed you the dragon, 
the first beast, the whore, which is the harlot, the mother of the harlots, which are those harlots, the colonial powers and America. We understand that the scriptures talk more in detail, but history is my portion. This is what I have to show you. Amen. So, Pastor, this was, this was indeed deep on tonight. So, so how important is it for us to, to learn our history um, and to, uh, to examine um, scripture to put it together with history? How important is that? That's why y'all raises up prophets to study our history. It's important. Some of the, but the, when you when you dealing with revelation, it can only be unlocked by the prophets. For I, re, I will do nothing except I reveal it unto my holy prophets. But the, here's the thing where they mess up the revelation. You'll have one person trying to explain all the revelation. If it took seven angels to seal it, it's going to take multiple plot prophets to unlock it. We all have a piece. That's my piece. So you you're saying that um, that. All of the knowledge in which you you've contained, you still don't, you still don't, you still don't contain all the knowledge. No, because that bad boy's loaded with secret societies. I'm not gifted in secret societies. If you talk to brothers like Pastor G, them is the secret society brothers. They can lay that out. If you talk to Tay O'Neill, them is secret society brothers. They can lay that out. I lay out the history. I told you when the when the dragon began, I proved it through history. I showed you where that first beast came from when it began. And I show you that second beast. And I showed you through history that England is the mother of all harlots. That's my job. <laughs> so you ain't gonna let me cross you up tonight, are you? <laughs> Everything else gonna be like duh to me. As a, as, let me tell you what the most high dealt with me about. He said, in your mouth is the history that I place. I'm going to show you revelation in the spirit. Speak what I show you. He didn't show me nothing else. I can't speak nothing else. I can tell you that that, that eighth head that they say was on the beast, the seventh head produced the eighth head. That would be the British produced the Americans. If you look at, if you look at patterns uh, and strategies of Satan, he's always going to use a vessel. But if you look at his strategy and his patterns, then you see, look, watch this. The Greeks and the Romans are the same people. And what does the Romans do? They adopt the what? The Greek culture. Now, watch this. The British and the Americans are the same people. What did America do? They adopt the culture of the British. See that? Uh, the stuff is ominous. So, Pastor Wilkins, what is, what is, um, what is, what is next? And I don't want you to basically reveal everything because you can't really talk about too many things that's that's concerning uh, your plans for uh, the sons of Yah or for chasing our history. Um, as scripture says, not to let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Um, but in an overall view, what, what would be next uh, for the sons of Yah or for chasing our history? The sons of Yah, I'm dealing with the restoration of the inner circle. I need to restore some pieces back to the sons of Yah that are currently not there. So I'm in prayer about the restoration of the inner circle. Because the people that Yah gave me for that inner circle, some of them got to be brought God. back into that circle. Oh, yeah. God. You see what I'm saying? Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are. There are are uh, loads of emails that are still coming in, uh, request uh, of, of, of people wanting to. Uh, I know one of your emails is sons of Yah, one, uh, uh, 144 uh, at gmail.com, but what's another way that they can, they can get in contact with you? To Amore Douglas. <laughs> I, I, I just don't have the, um, I don't have the room where I can just, I'm, I'm, I'm taking on water in my uh, inbox, my, um, my uh, personal phone, the, where I'm taking on water. I, I, I'm getting so many inboxes that I can get confused. 
there's so many people trying to get in the sons of y'all that um, we just need prayer as the inner circle. Uh-huh. It's that many people. I can't keep up with them like that. I didn't expect this. Like, if you take Chase in our history, since the Devil's Punch Bowl, uh, the membership has gone up over 300 and some odd people have joined since the Devil's Punch Bowl. I, I, um, I know that uh, that you're, you're in currently in process of uh, 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 developing a um, an avenue where your support uh, system for people who wants to support you financially, support uh, the ministry, because we know it takes finances in order to move ministry. Um, um, I know we're currently working on an avenue to whereas um, the uh, those that want to Uh, can can send uh, uh, dozen things of that nature for our community. You still got that cricket phone, don't you? Yeah, you still it's, that, it's you still got that Boost Mobile, don't you? That uh, uh that Metro phone or that free phone they give out. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 that's why I got these on so that I can catch what I miss. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm taking a chance. I don't know if I'm behind or. There go that Metro. This, that, 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 we need to do an advertisement now. Friends, this is the problem we have when you go buy a PCS Metro. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, listen, I, I I want to thank you personally uh, uh, for for sharing uh with us um i know you got more great things to come um that we're going to um we're going to air uh as far as interviews uh because there's a whole lot of topics that you still have to address and you can't address it all in a month you can't address it in a year but i will say to the audience please be patient and 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 as time progresses you you would try to get to their questions and try to address uh, their questions or their concerns. Uh, am, am I saying that right? Yeah, I get a lot of questions. I'm just now answering questions from, from people that wrote me in March. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm trying between uh, the the overload and my dyslexia. Uh, it, it's a deadly dose. I'm trying, but uh, when you was talking about giving. I won't let people give to me. It's chasing our history. Uh, I don't. I don't believe in. I don't take money. I've never taken money. I won't take money. Um, so all those people that's in my inbox talking about giving to chasing our history, I would rather they give to the sons of y'all. We need constitutional lawyers. We got a plan. We need constitutional lawyers. I need to be able to put the sons of y'all in Natchez, Mississippi, within the next ten months, and that's going to take finances. And it's not for us, it's for our people. Don't never give to me. Y'all will take care of me, but to give to the cause, the sons of y'all. Don't give to chasing our history. That's my personal conviction that y'all has given me. That's where my profit come from, chasing our history. No history, no profit. Uh, when, you, when me and you do that interview on my crossover, I will explain why I feel that way. It's pretty deep why I feel that way. It's my strong conviction. I've never had pastor's anniversary money. I've never taken pastor's appreciation. I never had a salary. I don't believe in that. Not for me. My crossover is that unique to where I totally rely on y'all to do what y'all's got to do. Um, when it comes to the sons of y'all, that's a movement for our people. It's the first awakened movement in U.S. history. Uh, chasing our history are the first people to ever record at the back of the devil's punch bowl. It's never been done before. Let me say this to you. I need to tell you this too. I was talking to uh, some locals that was telling me about a homeless man that they believe came up missing in the devil's punch bowl. They didn't know if it was myth or if it was true. And they said the homeless man uh, traveled with a uh, grocery cart. I found that grocery cart at the back of the devil's punch bowl. I took pictures of it, I filmed it, but I wasn't going to tell y'all on Facebook what I was dealing with because it had blowed my mind that this is a local legend 
And there sits that, uh, that uh, shopping cart at the back of the Devil's Punch Bowl. It was just absolutely shocking. Um, also, at the Devil's Punch Bowl, me and uh, uh, Prophet Davis, we prayed at six in the morning. And y'all spoke to Prophet David, Amore da David, and told him that something that I was desiring to see from the Most High concerning the Punch Bowl would be revealed to me that day. My desire and mine and Charnette's greatest expectation would be that we were standing in the back of the Punch Bowl and we could see the Mississippi River as it's flowing into the Punch Bowl. We actually filmed that where it was flowing into the Punch Bowl. So I knew that prophecy came to pass. I said to myself, I don't know if that is enough water to drown our people. And then a boat goes by on that water that let me know that water has to be at least 30 feet uh, uh, of deep in order for that boat to be traveling at that speed. It was a speed boat and it was moving. So it let me know, yes, that water is definitely deep enough to drown our people in that punch bowl. So these are just some of the things that I've witnessed. History is what Yah has called me to. Uh, the other parts of that prophecy is loaded. And I hope prophets are hearing me tonight. It's loaded with secret societies that connect the rest of the prophecy. I just laid the foundation of history to the prophecy. Do I know revelations? No, I know the history of revelation. Big difference. That's what I'm called to. Would you say that the Devil's Punch Bowl, out of all of the massacres that our people have suffered here in America, uh, that the Devil's Punch Bowl had the, the largest number as far as people killed? It's the, uh, it's the worst spiritual encounter. It's the most spiritual encounter I've ever had uh, in chasing our history. It's that many spirits. It, 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 it's happening in, it's like when you go into the devil's punch bowl and you back there on the back end, you literally step into another world. I mean, the flies are bigger back here. These are not horse flies because there's no horses back here. The, the fertilization of our people has grown stuff to uh, sizes that are not normal back there. When you talk about the worst tragedy that I've encountered in America during slavery, dealing with slavery, Hands down, it's the devil's punch bowl. I've never, and I've experienced a lot. I've seen a lot. I mean, I recorded, I got the only film of the only U.S. slave buried next to a U.S. president. It's never been done. We, me and Sharnett's got the first of a whole bunch of stuff. But I trade all of chasing our history to get the answers to the devil's punch bowl. And I was just, I, I, was, I was so... It's so much spiritually going on. Like, for instance, I See, was recording. That, that's why. That, that, that's what's basically, that's what drew me uh, to you or connect, connect my connection with you. Uh, because you're doing what a lot of mores and pastors are not doing at all. You're doing the ground. Well, more that's because we convince as Judah, as the awakening, as we the convince danger that part. God's going to magically you know, pick right. us up. You see what I'm saying? If uh, you listen to our people, which is sad, we, they say, well, we ain't supposed to do nothing. Y'all's going to deliver us. No. Show me one time where Yah delivered Israel and Israel was not involved. When they took the promised land, they had to fight for that land. Uh, when they took Jericho, they had to march around it. We have no incident where y'all just delivered us and our hands wasn't involved. And if I can get our people to understand that. See, here's our problem with our people. They try to discredit us based on how long somebody's been in the awakening. Uh, the Messiah covered that with the penny. It ain't how long you was in the vineyard. It was the fact that I told you to go to the vineyard and work. So your talent of working in the vineyard has credibility. And our people don't, they don't understand stuff like that. I, I don't know if they do, but I, I don't know if it's stiff neckness or I don't know what that is. But to think that we got to lose this great pumpkin theory, that because to think that y'all just going to magically come down and we just sitting in the promised land. No, he's telling us of travail for a reason. 
because we're going to experience that travail going back into the land that he ordained. But there's some things that's got to be put in motion spiritually for the heavens to move. And if there is nothing sent up to heaven, then what is y'all moving on? There has to be works that's going up this, that tells y'all, this is why I'm moving on this. This is why we, he's not, we're not sitting here waiting on him. We're active while he, before his arrival. So, so Pastor, here's the question for you uh, coming from uh, Akuti Johnson. She says, do you think the next step or one step is educating Black pastors? Let's deal with that in the crossover. <laughs> okay okay because you're talking to a black pastor that killed the law for 20 years people say he don't know the law i killed it for 20 years i can tell you how to defend it because i killed it okay hallelujah so how 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 hard i listen i know we're at the end of this this uh uh this discussion but how hard was it for you as a Christian pastor to transition over uh, to this awakening or to this truth, because like you said, you, you, you was, uh, you, 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 you crucified uh, the law <laughs> yeah, and now to, come, now to come back to embrace it. It's like, it's like Shaul, it's like Apostle Paul who, who was persecuting uh, the, the Yahudim and now here he is embracing, you know. So, 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 how was that transition? Here's what I say, Maury. It was, it was, a, it was, it was a culture shock. Um, I'm gonna tell you the things I did. I'm a, matter of fact, when we do the crossover, I'm gonna have my in my hand on my uh, desk. I will have, and I'll show it to you. My incorporated status, my 501 status. Um, what, what, what? Incorporated 501c3 status does, it basically makes you a Pontifus Maximus. Uh, you have immense power. I had immense power just by holding that corporation status and that 501c3. Um, in a brief summary, I'll tell you this. Me and Charnette built a corporation through the 501c3, and it was worth a half a million dollars. That's what me and Charnette walked away from, a half a million dollars, because we were so shocked that we was killing what was right. But here's the problem we face in two, Moray. Wow. We think that because we say law, stature, commandment, or Torah, that we say. The Edomite teaches the Torah only two. Study the Jehovah Witness. They teach the Torah. So teaching the Torah don't make you anything in the awakening. The Edomite teaches it. Do you follow the scripture that says that the testimony of the Messiah is prophecy? So if the testimony of the Messiah is prophecy, you got to deal with the 400 years. You got to deal with, like I was talking to uh, Pastor G today. That's my buddy right there. Me and him get down in some stuff. I was talking to Pastor Davis today too. And then I talked to uh, Apostle Botre yesterday. I do a lot of talking. But anyway, uh, and then I talk to you all the time. After you get through with the morning train, I talk to you. But anyway, uh, Amore Douglas, when we deal with this, you have to deal with the 400 years. You have to deal with Deuteronomy 28. You have to deal with these subjects because they deal with us. Like, for instance, the night we had the airing, I couldn't release everything because I seen it wasn't fruitful. But God. if you study Genesis and it talk about the three sons and they separate it and it talk about their generation. So we know, we know that the 12 tribes deal with generations. So when you hear the Amorites shall visit them again in the fourth generation, then we know the fourth generation, the fourth son is Judah. So somewhere in Judah's timeline in history, they're going to have the occurrence of the Amorites. What did the Amorites do? They guarded the Northern border of the Egyptian empire. What did the slave patrol do? They guarded the northern part of America to keep the slaves out. We see in these, there's things that we wear in like a coat, but because our preachers are not spiritual and they're trying to convert the law without the spirit, we come into this, I don't get it. So we make the preachers that do get it heresy. Man, that's a lot. Look, why you
more, man. <laughs> don't make me feel like uh, don't make me feel like Mike Tyson in front of Oprah now. <laughs> I'm gonna need sure they come in here and say that's that's my body. <laughs> Pastor Wilkins, it has been <laughs> it has been a a thrill tonight and 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 looking over into to the chat, man. They loving it on tonight. Great information, always great information. Um I can't wait till the next rap session with you, man. Um we're gonna set it up. Um uh, uh, hopefully we can do it next week. Um, we make I, it happen. Hallelujah! Yeah. So, so, so we can we can get it in. And uh, I really appreciate you coming and 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 just breaking bread with us and 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 sharing with us on tonight. Let me say this more, if I could, as we close. There's somebody out there in this timeline that's going to hear these pieces of revelation laid out. Again, if seven angels locked it, sealed it, it's going to take prophets to reveal it. One prophet cannot reveal revelation. They don't have the they don't have the mindset. It's not humanly possible. John didn't even understand what he was writing. So he wasn't revealing it. He was writing it as he was told to write. He revealed. He didn't. He didn't comprehend nothing. But what I'm saying is this. If we learn our peace, we can be mighty as the awakening. If the hand, if the eye can quit telling the nose how to breathe and the nose quit telling the eyes how to see, Amore Douglas, we can see some beautiful stuff. Some beautiful stuff. I, I, are you still there? Yeah. I, I think yes, I think I think that's 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 the it's just like the discussion that um um Moray uh Yahawada of Torah group had on 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 Monday. I think mm -hmm. um you said something that, that is an important factor because we spend more time at each other than than actually digging and trying to enlarge. Amen. In trying to enlighten our people, in time trying to discredit the other, a lot of it's because of either jealousy or ego problems. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and and we we got to get over ourselves in order to, in order for we can basically help somebody else. We got to be delivered from ourselves. But I want to say to you that I appreciate you, man, and your work. I know. I see your hard work. I see community, man, and um, you you belong up there along with alongside the great ones. And I appreciate you. The only thing great about me is my desire to sleep when I can. <laughs> Research gets me, man. I can be up to two, three in the morning. I got to figure this out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm trying to find um one of my um my famous uh quotes, but it don't look like I'm you didn't threw me off so much I, I ain't gonna find it tonight. <laughs> did I discourage anybody tonight, Amore, with, with what I was saying? Was did was it legible for them to understand? <laughs> Bro, look, look, I I I I appreciate you, man. I, I really do. I and I, I, want you. To, I want to say to to all those um, ones out there, I want to uh, I want to quote this famous quote from one of my favorite uh, uh, um, struggle leaders, uh, Marcus Garvey. He said, "A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots." And Maybe. it's important. It's important that 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 people such as yourself who has callings and and who are called for this great work that that we support what you're doing because you know a lot of people are not going to go or endure uh what you're having to endure not only that you have to face the issues uh from from the opposite from the strangers 
but to have to face. Amen. Do it from your own people. That's like that type of a. Uh, uh, and but I, I I really appreciate what Pastor Wilkins. You, you still hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so if uh, if you could close us out on tonight, your last words uh, um, um, to to our audience on tonight, and 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 we can and then you can. You can close it out in the prayer as well. I'll say this to our people. Um, I'm going to say what um, Darby told me when I was ridiculing him. I used to ridicule him bad. His church was only five miles from my church. And I had a great big old church. His church wasn't really that big. And I used to ridicule him about the awakening. And uh, I didn't get it at the time. But he this was this was his response to me. I'm only called to speak to the remnant, to the elect. Those who are the remnant and elect tonight, they understood the trumpet that I blew. Those who are not, they are placed in the heresy category. But only y'all will bring it either to a halt or continue. And if it be not of y'all, then it's not going to continue. But if it be of y'all, no man can happily overthrow it. That's what I would say. But Darby used to tell me I'm only called to the elect, the remnant. And those are the ones that hear me. What I said tonight is to the elect, the remnant. Those are the ones that will hear me. And I ask them to pray that other prophets come forth and put the other pieces to the mystery of revelation. Amen. Let me, let me uh, close this out in prayer. Most high, we thank you. We exalt you. We honor, we glory you. We bless you on tonight for the grace that has delivered us, that has saved us from ourselves. We ask you in this awakening that you would keep angels hedged around and about each and every last one of us, that you would increase our knowledge, but not unto dead works, but unto the works that reveal the kingdom of Yah. We ask you right now to have your way. We ask you to supply unity amongst us. Send forth the gift of wisdom. Send forth the gift of knowledge. In this day, increase the activity of those gifts. Unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of Yah. These things we ask in your son, Yahshua's name, or Yahuda, whoever they call. Him. In that name, we say, Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Wilkins. Thank you. Appreciate you. And uh, we say shalom and shalom and salama to all those that uh, tune in and that that support uh, this this platform and support uh, 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 platforms like Sons of Yah and Chase of Our History and and so on and so on. We appreciate all that you do, and most of all, we appreciate your prayer. So continue to love each other. Amen. Amen. Shalom, my brother.